So for Valentine's Day this year, League of Legends blessed us with Heartthrob Caitlyn as one of the Valentine skins. And I instantly knew upon seeing this pastel Y2K girly monstrosity, I had to make it. I started this project with patterning the skirt. I just decided to use my A-line skirt block because it fits me really nicely. So I just traced off the top of the pattern. As Caitlin's skirt is made up of an A-line section around the top and then it goes into a pleated skirt. I then used my French curve to make sure that my curved edge was super straight for when I was going to be cutting this piece. My actual patterning footage is a little all over the place as I ended up changing the patterning slightly for the top A-line section. The most important thing is that I ended up doing the skirt in four panels, um, basically two of the lilac and two of the hollow. So that's what I'm patterning out here is the longer lilac section, uh, though this is this isn't a tutorial on how I made the skirt. I am coming out with one, but this is more just a rundown of the process of making the cosplay. As you can see, I got this gorgeous lilac and white plaid for my fabric. My colour palette ended up being much more based on the in-game model where everything is much more pastel and there's no pink in the plaid unlike the splash art.
And for the hollow sections, I used a vinyl. This vinyl actually ended up being so stiff. Um, it ended up looking great, but I had such a hard time working with it and would really recommend if you plan to make this costume, you get something that has a lot more flexibility to it. So it's a lot easier to sew. The skirt has a cute little two buckle detail, which to keep clean, I'm going to embed into the side seam. I left the buckles raw because vinyl does not fray, but I did a fake top stitching detail around the edge to make it look like they had been finished properly. As you can see, I just did this on my machine, sewing really slowly and carefully right up against the edge. To make my life easy when doing the seam, I tacked the little buckles in place first so they would not move around. And for my construction, of the paneling kit, I just did a regular running stitch, making sure that the buckles were enclosed in it. As you can see when you open this up, everything's now super nice and clean and secure together. And then to help with the fit along my hip line and also to give a clean and smart finish, I decided to top stitch down these seams. This is one of my preferred seaming techniques. I personally think top stitching seams make them lay a lot nicer on the body, especially when you are using a fabric like this where you are not going to want to repress your seam every single time that you wear it. Once the final section was constructed together, I added on my lilac panels, just doing a straight stitch again. I then, similarly to the side pieces, did a top stitch along the hollow and lilac edge turning towards the lilac side this is again just so it stays nice and clean and it's got a really professional look to it top stitching here as well also helps to make sure the fabric remains lying in the same direction for the garment's entire life The final construction step of the upper part of the skirt is adding the buttons onto the buckles. I'd already tacked 
the buckle straps into place and then just hand sewed each button on making sure to sew them plenty of times so they cannot come loose and of course i chose really pretty sparkly glitter buttons so they would interact with the holographic fabric underneath them It was then time to prepare the bottom section, so I am sewing on what will be the binding, the, the pleated section of the skirt. As you can see, I turned my binding up towards the front edge of the fabric and carefully top stitched it all into place. This would end up actually being a nightmare because this edge would be so heavy. As you can see, I then began to experiment with my pleating, just folding and pinning the fabric in place. Once I had got through all the pleating, it was time to make all of the hearts for the chain belt. I ended up using a bagging out method for this, sewing two fluffy faux fur hearts together. Once each heart was sewn together, I could turn them out or bag them out. I made sure to clip all of the corners and little indents so I got a perfect heart shape. Now for the jacket, I did not record a lot of the process of making it because at times a lot of it was very fiddly to sew and I needed so much desk space to be able to get the best finish on it. A full video will be coming out on how to make a cropped jacket with lapels like this, but essentially the jacket is quite a basic blazer pattern. I am doing a formal sleeve where it is cut in two sections instead of the standard one sleeve section with one seam in it that you're probably used to seeing. I also did a prefixed lining to all of the vinyl pieces just because the vinyl backing isn't very nice against the skin so I used this grey gingham as I thought it matched the colour palette and theming of Caitlyn really nicely and you wouldn't be able to see it as it would all be on the inside of the garment. An important construction choice with the Caitlyn cosplay was making sure that all seams were sewn outwards where a purple cover would be put over them. This is because when you turn your seams outwards when you're going to cover them, it means that the inside of your garment is really nice and clean because you're already hiding the raw edge on the top. As you can see, I'm now covering the raw edge. The technique I'm using here is most similar to doing a boning channel in a garment, except it's on the upper side instead of the underside, much similar to making a corset. I then just top stitch this down on my sewing machine. However, I later realized it would be much easier to hand sew the majority of this cover down, mainly because the sleeve is going to become so tight and the vinyl fabric is so stiff, but it will actually ruin the fabric turning the sleeve inside out. So the safest way to apply it was to hand stitch it. As you can see, I'm being absolutely meticulous with this seam covering though. Even before I get to the hand sewing stage, I wanted to make sure it would remain the whole width 
along the length of the sleeve, so I'm measuring it out periodically with a ruler. I then moved on to making the back panel. The back panel is actually the design element of this cosplay that made me want to make it. I decided to go absolutely atrociously Y2K with this section and did a faux fur heart, which I applique on. I decided I wanted to do a really interesting textural mix here and later I am going to do a clear glitter vinyl overlay over the faux fur. It just kind of reminds me of some of the elements you would see in early 2000s fashion. Those absolutely atrocious mix of textiles. As you can see it looks quite cute with just the faux fur. But here I am adding the glitter vinyl on and I really like how I decided to do this because it really adds a almost 3D element to the heart. And for the purple outline of the heart, I did a technique similar to the very popular cosplay technique of doing a vinyl over a foam, except I did it over an upholstery lever so that it would be easier to sew on my machine. As you can see, you get a really clean finish with it, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was the first time I'd done a technique like this on any of my costumes, and I'm definitely planning to do it on more costumes in the future. The next element to make was the hat, which I did in a beret style. I've made a lot of hats like this for cosplays in the past, so it was quite an autopilot process. Basically, I just made an outer section and then an inner lining section. They're both sewn in the exact same way. It's kind of like making a donut um, out of fabric is the best way to describe it. I then made the pom-pom by gathering a circle of faux fur together and adding some polyfill to it. I went comically large for this pom-pom, mainly because I wanted it to be seen on the hat. And from a lot of photo angles, if you make it too small, you're not going to see it. And the way they pose Caitlyn in-game, it's quite apparent that it's fair. It also worked out very well as we went to watch some of the MSI games recently. And you can see me in the footage on the days we were there because you can spot the Caitlyn pom-pom just because it's so obnoxiously large. I then went back to working on the belt, making sure the hearts were trimmed down and nice and neat, and then began to attach the pearls on. I ended up using a bit of a smaller pearl as I could not get these iridescent pearls in a bigger size, though if I can find them in a larger size I would like to upgrade them to be slightly bigger in the future. They are still noticeable though, which is all that matters. And then this is the garment piece I have absolutely no footage of, is making the bandeau crop top. I was preparing to go to PAX East at this point, so just kind of sewed it on autopilot and did not film much of it. The lucky thing is I am making a tutorial very soon on how to make this exact bandeau. It's really easy to do. The main thing I did with Caitlin was layer a rib knit over it to give that knitted effect. The main thing about my Caitlyn bodice is actually that it is a boned structured piece. This is just hidden and you can't see it from the outside. The reason I made it like this is because it gives you that really nice shape and structure on your body that a knit is just not going to do. I also finished off the bottom and top 
edge with an elastic edging this is what you do for this style of garment it helps to keep it nice and snug to your skin so i'm just doing a straight stitch along the top edge of the elastic and then i turn this over and I do a three-step zigzag to hold it in place. The three-step zigzag also helps the elastic to then move. It's quite common for the stitch I did before to then break, but it's okay because the three-step zigzag is what's actually holding the elastic in place. And as I mentioned before, the sleeves got to a point where they had to be hand-sewed. For doing this, I used a hand sewing technique which replicates a machine stitch. So this meant my sleeves were super secure and that binding wasn't going to pop off at all and it was going to stay in place and not wrinkle up. And then for my cap, I used a proper cap insert from an old baseball cap. What I did was I actually hot glued the vinyl pieces on. Um, I eventually bought some adhesive vinyl for making Caitlin's rifle, though I, did, I never reapplied it on here. As you can see um, in this footage, where the hot glue is applied, you, it looks a little bumpy. This ended up going away though, um, so this actually worked out perfectly fine. I did like a sandwiched layer in the end, and I think it worked out really well. The cap insert, once completely trimmed down, is then sewn to the hat. I of course did this with a hand stitch because I didn't want to risk popping and breaking a needle on this. And then I finally got around to finishing off those sleeves by sewing on the holographic binding to the wrist cuff edge. I think you can see here why I had to hand sew it on as that is such a tiny opening and I just could not cleanly get this done on my machine. So hand sewing was the choice here and I'm really glad I hand sewed it because this bit of the cosplay looks great. Um, I managed to get my tension really, really good whilst I was hand sewing it. Apparently, not your cell phone sounds like it got my biggest sleeve opening, but let me use my phone. 
The last piece of footage I got was me starting to make the wig and then proceeded to not record any of me making the wig as I think I was about one day here before our flight out. But the main thing is this cosplay turned out looking amazing. Um, I'm so happy with it, like words do not describe how happy I am with how it came out. Like, for lack of a better of a word, it's so slay, and I got in all the final details ready for wearing it to MSI the other weekend. And of course, a moment to appreciate the true success of this cosplay, the League of Legends stamp of approval.